All right. Uh, well, I'm going to be speaking this evening about the influence of Jewish thought on post-war American abstraction and beyond. I'd like to thank Professors Douglas Rosenberg and Terrell Dobbs for the opportunity to present and the 92nd Street Y for hosting. And I'd also like to say that this presentation uh, was originally a book that was published uh, in 1993 uh, by Ulisse Calypso, uh, a publishing house in Naples, uh, directed by Pino and Maggi Napolitano, with an introduction by Enrico Pedrini. It's interesting to note how many significant protagonists of the abstract expressionist movement were of Jewish descent. Artists like Barnett Newman, Morris Lewis, Mark Rothko, Philip Guston, Helen Frankenthaler, and many others were Jews, as were critics like Clement Greenberg, Harold Rosenberg, Maya Shapiro, and Robert Rosenblum. In the wake of the Holocaust and with the advent of a Jewish state in Palestine, it was natural that art artists began, begin to reflect on their uh, background and particular Jewish identity. Any better? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so, so I'd like to speak about three currents, uh, particularly in Jewish thought. Halha, the way, uh, the more traditional law-based approach, uh, Jewish mysticism or Kabbalah. And if we have time, I'll offer a brief coda on the Jewish folk tradition. Chalcha uh, comes from the Exodus. Uh, when Moses ascended Mount Sinai to receive the tablets of the law, he was gone for 40 days and 40 nights, uh, during which time the Israelites became uh, restless and demanded that Aaron provide them with a god to help deliver them from the desert. Aaron obliged, uh, melted down ornaments and earrings of the Israelites to fashion a golden calf and the Israelites were worshiping this calf when Moses descended from Sinai uh, in his anger destroying the tablets of the law. Um, and as a result, the second commandment of the Decalogue uh, prohibiting the creation of graven images has conditioned the nature of Jewish art making from biblical times through much of the 19th century, uh, limiting it uh, largely to symbolic or decorative uh, uh, work. Kabbalah might seem like an obscure influence on artists of that generation, but in fact they had a, a distinguished champion in the person of Gershom Scholem, a German historian uh, born in Berlin, uh, moved to, to Palestine before the Second World War, ultimately became the first professor of Jewish mysticism at Hebrew University in Jerusalem. Uh, but he was a, a very a prolific writer, and some of his books were found uh, in the library of Barnett Newman, particularly on, on his death. Uh, Sholem wrote about Isaac Luria, an important Kabbalist of the 16th century. Uh, here's an image of Luria and his grave site, which is a pilgrimage site in Safed, in Northwest Israel today. Um, Luria identified three phases of, of creation. Uh, the first being a tzimtzum, or contraction. The second, a shavirat kelim, the breaking of the vessels. And finally, a tikkun, or correction. Tzimtzum, according to, to Luria, at the beginning of time, or the beginning of creation, God was manifested as the Ein Sof Or, or this absolute essence, uh, an all-encompassing light. And in order to create space for creation, uh, uh, it contracted into, um, in a process known as uh, Tsim Tsum, to create a primordial space. And you could think of it as akin to throwing a pebble into still water, and the concentric uh, rings that form uh, are analogous to the ten sephirot, or divine emanations. Uh, here they are in a different uh, formation. They are from uh, top to bottom, the highest being a uh, keter, or crown, and the lowest malchut, or kingdom. Uh, there are different uh, phases in the creation, according to this, this worldview, and the, um, the light 
forms the contours of a, a first man, Adam Kadmon, this primordial man, and then hardens into vessels at different points on his body, reflecting the, uh, the sephirot. Then from the forehead of Adam Kadmon uh, pours light into these vessels. And some of the lower uh, sephirot, the vessels, are unable to uh, contain this luminosity, and they shatter, sending uh, sparks into the void. It's something, it's something like a champagne tree at a wedding. Uh, uh, it, it's also described with the metaphor of a blacksmith. A blacksmith is creating something at his anvil, but the byproduct of that creation is uh, sparks. This is, this is a, um, a text from, a, a Kabbalistic text from Safed, and you'll notice in the upper left-hand corner there's a text in the a block of text in the form of a vessel. And finally, tikkun. Uh, tikkun is this restoration or correction of that initial catastrophe, or the breaking of vessels. The idea is to return light uh, to its source, return the sparks of light to Adam Kadmon, and thus bring about uh, the messianic age or golden age. So in terms of artists, probably the uh, front and center in terms of uh, uh, artists who, who were profoundly influenced by uh, Jewish thought and particularly Jewish mysticism uh, was Barnett Newman. He, he was born in New York City uh, to an Orthodox family, studied philosophy at City College, um, and he was one of the most conceptual of the abstract expressionists. What you're looking what you're looking at uh, is One Moment One. It's a painting of 1948 in the modern. Uh, it was his first zip painting, and the zips are these vertical, vertical marks that uh, uh, separate the, the canvas and can certainly be thought of as akin to this separation of darkness from light or the heavens from the earth, man from woman, and also like the ray or kav in Jewish mysticism. Onement can refer to monotheism or at one like atonement, alluding to Yom Kippur, uh, which is the most sacred high holiday, which is also atonement for having worshiped the golden calf. Uh, Abraham of 1949, this is his first old black painting and, and is derived from both the name of his father who had recently passed away and Abraham the patriarch. We see something white. Uh, yeah, there's actually, there's actually, it's black on black. There's a zip down the center of it. This is Black Fire, uh, another uh, painting. This one, uh, the titles derive from the Kabbalistic idea of black, black and white fire, the black being the ink on the Torah scroll and the white being the parchment of the, the scroll. Uh, this is a Dom, a painting of 1951. Uh, and I want to point out that the, the position of the zips was always uh, determined carefully by, by Newman, who was very interested in numerology. And you're mostly aware that the letters of the Hebrew alphabet all correspond to numbers. Uh, it was known as uh, gematria in antiquity. And he would often determine the placement of a zip uh, through calculations, along with the number of paintings that he would, uh, he would exhibit in an exhibition. He liked for the numbers to be auspicious. <coughs> this is a Tsim Tsum, uh, a sculpture from 1974, uh, derived from this uh, first contraction of the creation in Jewish mysticism. Where is that? To be certain, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Uh, this is, it's actually based on a model that he made uh, in 1963 of a, of a synagogue windows. So it seems to him the sculpture is actually derived from an earlier uh, model that he created for a synagogue window. Uh, this is Broken Obelisk, a wonderful sculpture by uh, Newman, which again refers to the ray or cob of Jewish mysticism. Uh, broken, like an, the imperfect creation. Helen Frankenthaler, uh, 
also appertained to this, this group, a, a bit younger. Uh, she came from a very assimilated uh, Jewish family uh, in New York City, grew up on the Upper East Side. Uh, her father was a Supreme Court uh, Justice in New York State, studied at the Art Students League in Bennington College, and she was included in Clement Greenberg's uh, Post Painterly Abstraction Exhibition of, in 1964 at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. Uh, this painting is Eden, a painting of 1956. Uh, it began with the, with the placement of the number, the number 100, um, according to Frankenthaler, and then the, the figuration and the colors uh, followed from there. One thing that she uh, created, uh, an invention of Frankenthaler, so that's very significant, is this uh, soak stain approach. She was very taken with the work of uh, Jackson Pollock, and she would often paint with the canvas uh, uh, laid out on the ground in front of her, uh, but she would work with unprimed canvas. So she would actually she would use highly thin color and then apply it to the to the canvas in such a way that the paint mingled with the with the fabric, um, which certainly gives a very different uh, effect uh, coloristically, uh, but also contains the seed of its own destruction because the um, the oil. Uh, causes canvas to rot or to badly discolor. So again, there's this notion of uh, uh, darkness and light, uh, creation and destruction being uh, commingled in the work. Uh, this is Jacob's Ladder, a painting of 1957. A seascape with dunes, 1962. And finally, the, yeah, yeah. and finally, the Bay of 1963. Uh, Morris Lewis, uh, nay Lewis Bernstein, is from, was from Baltimore, Maryland, studied at the Maryland College of Art, and worked for the WPA in New York City during the 1930s. And his work was strongly influenced by Frankenthaler. He, along with Kenneth Nolan, visited her studio in New York City and was very taken with the soak stain uh, uh, approach to painting, which he, he used uh, uh, you know, strongly in his own work. The titles are often derived from Jewish themes. This is Aleph of 1960, uh, Aleph being the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet and often associated with the creation. This is uh, Tet of 1958, uh, another, another letter. This is Dalit Sadiq of 1958, or the Holy uh, Dalit, uh, another letter. And finally, uh, Beth Kuf, uh, 1958, the house of the Kuf, uh, or the letter uh, Kuf. Mark Rothko. Um, Mark Rothko, born Marcus Yakovlevich Rothkovich in Vinsk, Latvia, emigrated to Portland, Oregon, where he was a yeshiva student. And after a two-year stint at Yale University, he moved to New York City. Uh, he did different things to earn a living at that time, uh, but one of his gigs was to draw maps for Rabbi Lewis Brown's book, The Graphic Bible, uh, in 1928. Uh, this painting is violet, black, orange, yellow, on white, and red of 1949. And one thing that uh, fascinates me about the composition of Rothko's work is the way that these, these blocks of color correspond, interestingly, to the uh, blocks of Hebrew text that you might find in a manuscript or, or printed book. Uh, this is gray, orange, on maroon, number 8, 1960, and number 10 of 1952. And of course, the, the Jewish people have had more than their share of troubles over the course of their long history. This is the destruction of the temple in 70 uh, um, ACE and the shadow from the Nora. Philip, Philip Guston, uh, born Philip Goldstein in Montreal, Canada, uh, also studied at Otis Art Institute in California, but I, I view him as a transitional uh, figure in, in the arts. He, his early work was firmly rooted in abstract expressionism. This, this piece is uh, to BWT of 1952. Um, but in his later work, he, he focused more on de 
depic depictive uh, figuration like this book and an abstracted language of 1969. Uh, this is Red Sea, the swell blue light of 1975, certainly a, a theme of the exodus and passage to freedom and the trials encountered along that passage. And, and this is City Limits of 1969, and you'll see that you're, he really was engaging with social issues of the time. I mean, at the height of the race riots and civil rights movement, and also with a sense of dark humor, these kind of uh, Klansman-like uh, cartoons driving around urban blight, you know, one of them smoking a cigarette. But, but I think there's a real, uh, you know, he, he was starting to, to engage uh, through through a kind of tragic irony uh, with, with these later paintings. And I'm, I'm a great fan of the, the Golem story. You know, there are many, many Golem stories, the Golem of Prague being the most famous. Uh, these are stills from the famous uh, Paul Wegner silent movie of 1920. Uh, the, the story is that in medieval Prague, a rabbi uh, low fashioned an anthropomorphic being out of clay and inscribed on his forehead uh, the Hebrew word uh, emet. Um, to deactivate the golem, he could simply erase the, the olive, the first character, to make it met. So from truth to death. Uh, this is street, street golem, a digital collage of my own. But the idea was that the, this, this golem was created to protect the people of, of Prague from expulsion or annihilation. So. Uh, it's intriguing to me that a certain body of figurative sculpture uh, may be derived from this unorthodox uh, story. This is George, George Siegel, pop artist, um, born in New York City, studied Cooper Union. The Gay Liberation Movement uh, in Monument uh, in Christopher Park. Abraham's Farewell to Ishmael of 1987. Uh, this is uh, Jonathan Borofsky, uh, born in Boston, studied at Yale. Hammering Man, uh, a work of 1979 in Frankfurt. It's kinetic, the arm of the, the uh, being uh, moves, ha actually hammers, moves up and down. Borofsky would number his ideas. Uh, this is a self-portrait with numbers, uh, which certainly uh, relates to the geometry of, the, uh, of Jewish mysticism and perhaps also alludes more darkly to the uh, tattoos given to Jewish inmates of uh, concentration camps. Uh, William Kentridge, born in Johannesburg, South Africa, uh, studied at the Johannesburg Art Foundation. Uh, this is the refusal of uh, time. Kentridge uh, grew up around apartheid and definitely engaged with uh, you know, issues of social uh, inequity in his work. He also invented a fascinating approach to filmmaking. He would, he would film uh, a drawing, the evolution of a drawing. So it's an application of pigment uh, and erasures became part of the temporal dimension of the film. And when it was projected, you had this kind of flickering uh, ethereal uh, document uh, to the artistic process. Uh, this is more sweetly play the dance. Uh, a video plays across eight screens. Um, so I'd like to conclude with the, there, there are so many Jewish artists across disciplines that they're uh, too numerous to mention, but perhaps the most significant Jewish concept that unites their intention is tikkun, uh, that desire to somehow return uh, sparks of light to their source, source and heal in some small measure the troubled world that we live in. And with that, I'll open it up to questions.